Hey, good morning. Thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, looks like we have a little bit of a smaller group today, which is, which is great. Um, we're going to be doing a little bit of discussion later. So um, we're happy to have all of you that were able to carve out some time today. I know the, the weather has been pretty terrible uh, in various parts across the state. So we're hoping that none of you all are experiencing any damage from that. We uh, try to keep our eyes out on those damage reports that we get from health, um, just to make sure everybody's doing okay out there. My name is Laura Mallory, and I'm going to be guiding our session today. Um, Dr. Allgood had another commitment and is unable to join us, but we wanted to keep the appointment with you all um, since it's been a little while since we've had the opportunity to come together with you. And so, we're going to we're going to move forward without him as best we can. Um, we do have a couple of items that we want to share with you all today, and um, we're going to be getting some input from you all today uh, on our quality program. And uh, so we'll be talking about that in a little while. There are a couple of folks from our division that are on uh, the session with us today. Um, and then we may have a few more join as we move along. Um, again, I'm Laura Mallory, and I'm one of the deputy directors here at DECCD, and my focus is typically on policy, um, but I wear a lot of hats. Um, with us today, we also have Angela Crockett. Um, she'll, you'll hear from her in a little while. She's uh, the other deputy director. I think that I'm trying to scroll, scroll through. Um, I think Vicki's on. Um, Vicki, do you want to say hello? Yes, hi. Um, happy to join y'all today. Um, I am one of the co-directors of the Division of Early Childhood Care and Development. I work alongside Chad Allgood. Like I said, I'm scrolling. If there's anybody else from the office that wants to introduce yourself, if I'm scrolling and missing you. Okay. Looks like Lydia is having a little bit of trouble joining us. So I'm just responding to her. Okay. All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started again. I, um, I'm grateful to see everybody here today. It means that um, we don't have any weather damage. So we're going to assume that everybody's doing pretty good out there and go ahead and get started with the information that we have to share with you. The first piece of information that we just want to let you guys know about is that there is a new resource and referral site that's opened up here in Jackson. Um, it is located at 750 North State Street. This is where our offices are located. It is in the bottom floor of our building. It is accessible through the front door. Uh, we encourage everyone to come and visit and check it out. The intent for this particular resource and referral site was to be a model site for other resource and referral um, subgrantees to model the service program and the design as, in as much as they can with the space that they have available in their areas. Um, you do not have to live in a particular um, r and service area to visit one. So if you are up in Jackson at any time, if you're not local to us, please stop by and uh, give us a visit. We would love to show you around the new site downstairs and uh, let you see all of the things that we have um, currently and then show you some things that we have in store for the future of our resource and referral sites. This site offers the typical services that you guys have seen before in terms of the lending library and the teacher make and take area. 
We also have um, partnered with some other divisions and some other agencies to work on being of greater service in the community. So for instance, we have, um, we have a, a safe room and a playroom for uh, children who are being, uh, who are involved in the intake process through Child Protective Services, um, just to sort of give them some familiar, uh, comfortable space while, while they're going through the intake process with Child Protective Services. We also have a space that can be utilized for telehealth and um, other one-on-one -on -one therapy sessions uh, here in the r and And so it's pretty exciting that we are keeping our eye towards expanding the services and what an r, &R um, how an r, &R can benefit a community. So please do stop by um, and take a look at it. Anytime you're in the area, we would love to have you. No appointment needed. Uh, Angela is going to talk to you guys about this one, but um, we are very excited about an upcoming change for CCPS. Um, we are getting ready to go into user testing for a new feature that I'll let Angela describe to you. Good morning, everyone. Um, so uh, we are really, really, like Laura said, we're really excited about this um, new phase that we are going into um, with our document upload. Um, we know that we have really been struggling with this, um, trying to you know, make sure parents are able to submit documents. So we are now in a new testing phase of adding um, document upload to the application so that the parent can submit the documents um, when they submit their application. So, um, and I know that's exciting um, for you guys as well. Um, parents will be able to, to upload their documents via phone, tablet, or their desktop. Um, and so um, it'll be a little bit easier. So if they have a picture that they need to take, they'll be able to use that picture and the system will be able to accept it. So we are in the testing phases of this. And so we we'll hope to roll this out pretty quickly. Um, and once we're done with this process and, um, and you know, make sure that it's successful for the parents once we test through it, uh, and then we'll, we'll open it up to families to be able to use in the application for its add a child, new child, or redetermination. And so um, that feature will be across all three of those applications. And so we would no longer use the Smartsheet um, uh, document upload process that we have. Parents will still be able to use fax or mail, that, that those avenues will still be available. But we're hoping that this will help them um, with their documents to be able to submit it on the application. If the parent um, uh, gets an email that says they need to submit you know, new documents and the application is no longer available, they will be able to go onto the application site and there will be a portal there for them to upload the application just as if they were, were with their phone, tablet, or desktop. So uh, it's very exciting. We're going through the phase now. So we're hoping um, that this feature really, really helps everyone out and they'll be able to see what they've submitted. Uh, and just to add on to that, once the um, once the application is, is live and is completed with the testing process, we will be offering um, live training and then it can be recorded so we can have some um, on-demand support for parents. And we will offer that also to providers so that they can understand the parent process um, so that if parents have any questions or, um, or are unclear that that is a new feature or service that is available, everyone can, can be receiving the same message. So we will be doing some training for parents and we'll, we'll share that information, same information with providers to let them know once that goes launched. So stay tuned, we are very excited about that. Okay. Our next item is that the informa these information sharing sessions are going to be transitioning to a quarterly schedule um, with the um, with all of our agencies and organizations opening back up and 
Um, having face-to-face -face meetings, it means a lot of us are less available in the offices um, as opposed to how we were during COVID times. And so we're going to make sure that when we have a meeting on the schedule, our schedule, our schedules will allow for it, our calendars will allow for that. And so we're going to be moving to a quarterly schedule. So the next two sessions um, that will round us out for this calendar year will be July 6th and October 2nd. Uh, if you, as a registrant for today's session, you've all already registered for future sessions. And so you will not need to do anything um, to have access to these sessions. They, um, you'll just log in the same way that you did for today's session and you'll be able to access those. But we have moved to a quarterly schedule. So I just wanted to bring that uh, to your attention. We will be sharing that out through um, an email to all of the providers just in case folks uh, so that folks who aren't joining us today can get that information as well. And then lastly, the, the big focus that we've got going on around here right now um, is on the quality services that are offered by DECCD. And you all may remember that last fall, we had a series of virtual town hall meetings that Dr. Alford led, where he was getting some input on the quality services that our agency funds and or offers directly. And so we're, we're doing a, a round two of that. We're doing the next step in that process um, to, to dig a little bit deeper. And so there are some upcoming town hall meetings regarding um, getting additional input about the different quality services. We're gonna talk about some of those questions and some of those items today a little bit, um, but I want you to be on the lookout for those emails, that invitation. We will be traveling to do in-person meetings in various locations around the state. And so once those dates and times and locations are set up in your area, you will be receiving that information via email from us. So keep a lookout for that because we have found the information to be extremely valuable in the sessions that we've held so far. So we look forward to hearing more from you all. And, and you know, I wanna let you know that if you attended any of the sessions that we offered in the fall, um, it's not a one and done, it's an ongoing process. So feel free to continue to join the sessions. They do have a different focus. They are, as I said, digging a little bit deeper and we're, um, we're mining more of your expertise as we move through the second round. So um, if you're able to join us, uh, then please do. I know that uh, Dr. Albert mentioned he's going to be sending out um, some surveys about some of this information and um, he's casting a wide net for ways that we can get your input. So keep, a, keep an eye out on your emails for those various invitations and, um, and you know take a look and see what fits best with what your schedule is and and that way we don't miss out on your um on your input because as i said before we've we've found it very valuable we've taken information that we got in the first round and we've already put some things into place to address those issues which dr allgood discusses in the second round of town hall meetings we're going to talk a little bit about what those might be today but um we're, we, we're not sitting on the information, waiting for um, them to be over to take action as we're, as we're moving through the rounds of information collecting. We are looking at things that we can address quickly um, and, then, and then work with you all to develop a plan on those things that will take longer to address adequately for you. So um, stay tuned, as I said, for information on how you can participate in that process. Okay, so when, uh, when we talk about the quality support program, we're talking about these different elements here. We're talking about um, the standard designation for childcare programs that exist that, that all subsidy approved providers have gone through. Um, we don't have any non-subsidy approved providers that have gone through the standard designation process, but 
Um, they certainly, it is open to them if they wanted to, but that is one of the elements of the quality support program, the standard designation, which includes um, a, a, the large self-study piece. We're talking about the child care resource and referral sites, um, how they're functioning in the areas, where they're located, access issues, um, uh, the, the um, materials in terms of the variety and what, if they're meeting the needs of the particular community and what they what they are seeking, all of those issues around how the resource and referral sites offer or operate, excuse me. Early childhood training and workshops. You all know these are all are our, we've had them Zoom through um, through the pandemic a lot and we're branching back out into face-to-face. -face. These are your training sessions, your workshops, your professional development sessions where you're getting a lot of your contact hours, those things that are done in groups um, where you get a chance to network with other folks. Um, the early intervention services that we're funding, this is largely done through the um, Early Childhood Inclusion Center with Dr. Westbrook and her group. Um, all of those services that they offer to help you all um, prepare for and successfully um, support children who have special needs in your programs. The on-site technical assistance um, where our folks can come to your program to be in the classroom to work directly with teachers and directors and other program staff about a variety of issues. Leadership and business training. This covers everything from starting a business to staffing a business to budgeting for the business to overall leadership and um, um, family engagement supports is the last piece. Um, engaging families in your program and in the classroom both uh, for the betterment of the children that we have engaged. So when we talk about, when you hear um, our office say quality support programs, these this is what it includes as a total. So we're talking about all of these things um, as different elements of that quality support program. And so what we want to do is um, we want to do a little poll. So you'll need to Get your screens now ready. Get your screens if you're not. Um, we're gonna launch this poll. And um, if you'll take a second to tell us which ones, which elements of the quality support program are working well. Um, if we know what's generally working well, then we can, we also know what's not working well and where our attention needs to focus. But if you'll take a second. Um, and just tell us which of these quality support program elements are working well in your area. You can choose multiple things. We're getting some answers in. Thank you. We're going to wait a few more minutes. We're getting good feedback here. Okay, so it looks like training and professional development are is is working well for for a lot of you. The R and R sites and on site TA seems to be going well. Um, got some areas where uh, this group thinks we need to focus attention would be on that standard designation process and early intervention. 
family engagement is like, and some leadership is training. Great. That is very, very helpful. Just look in there. Okay. All right. So we're, we will include this in our ongoing compilation of feedback. That's very helpful. Thank you. Okay, now we're, I'm going to ask you another question. Now, if you could take to the chat, tell us, we're interested in hearing from you about what you think quality programs should look like. It, this doesn't have to be an exhaustive list, just things that come to the top of your mind, if you will go to the chat to give us your responses in there. It can be just a few words, just, you know, a laundry list of things that um, you think indicate quality in a program, um, or, you know, a sentence, whatever you're more comfortable with, um, just so that we have an idea from you when you're thinking about your programs, and you're thinking about those areas that you're proud of and those, those areas where you know that you're offering really strong quality. What is it about those particular pieces of your program that lets you know that's where quality is? I'll let y'all think about that. We've gotten a couple of responses. Just give them a second to sort of gather your thoughts and share those over with us. Mm -hmm. Now we've got some great providers on, on the session with us today. So um, take just a second and throw, throw out some ideas in the chat. seeing some great responses come in and I'll, I'll share some of those out with with you all um whilst I know some of y'all may may still be thinking um the wage supplements for child care workers we know that um we know that pay for the teachers is a huge issue age appropriate activities very important teacher student ratio with intentional teaching and coaching those are great. Um, coaching teachers and age-related activities for children and after-school children. Yes, absolutely. Quality material for students and teachers. And Ms. Reed, when you're, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to call you out, but um, you entered in quality material for students and teachers. Or do you mean um, instructional materials for? Um, for the classroom, or do you mean a quality curriculum uh, that the teachers are implementing, or both? If you could just clarify that, oh, both, great, okay, sure, thank you. Uh, next, we have rich language, professionalism, age-appropriate activities and materials, absolutely. Effective quality services, rapport with providers developmentally appropriate practices and professionalism, okay. Yes, and again, um, age appropriate activities, parenting, training, teaching materials. And, you know, a lot of you all are mentioning age appropriate activities. So I, I just wanna pose a, a follow-up question about that to you all and um, ask if, um, 
if you all feel that you're that you receive pressure from parents for activities that are perhaps not uh, age appropriate, or if you're if you feel that your teachers are um, just not um, not coming to you skilled to understand what age appropriate activities are, I, I wanna I wanna dig a little bit deeper on the age appropriate activities. Um, since so many of you mentioned it. So if anybody wants to throw out into chat and, and um, share something about the age appropriate activities, that would be great. Workable relationships, that is, relationships are so key. Yes, I agree. Okay. Those are, that is some great input. We, um, we have a record of all of the chat, so we will be able to add all of this input into our, into our list um, that we can use to, uh, to address these issues. Thank you all for that one. And I just want to impose on you just one more time. I just have one more question. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a placeholder in the chat for our next question so we know when we're going to start getting answers for that. Last call on poll question number two. Okay. All right. So for poll three, We'd like to hear from you all what concerns you about a system that would rate quality in your programs. You know, we have had, uh, we had the Quality Stars program in the past um, and we had the launch of the standard and comprehensive designations, all of which were designed to uh, rate the quality that you all are offering in your programs. Um, the standard designation is remains in place um, more as a self-study guide and a, a mechanism for launching our other quality supports for you. Um, but if you were to think about um, a system that um, would be put in place that would identify um, quality in child care programs, what would concern you about that process? Um, I'm seeing a lot of names that have been around for a long time. So you guys have looked through a lot of different iterations um, that have come out through this office. So I know that there's a lot of experience on the session today. So share with us, let us know what concerns you might have. Okay, looks like, um, like we aren't getting as much activity for this question, um, which is okay, but this is, this is um, a, safe space, a safe place to voice your um, concerns about what that system might be. Um, so please don't be shy.
Good. Give us just one more second and then I'll, I'll, I'll share out with what's there, but we do want to hear what your concerns about a, a system that rates or identifies quality in childcare. I don't really like that rating word, but um, just we all sort of have a common understanding of what a um, quality rating system is. So we're going to use that for now um, when we have these discussions. But feel free to share. Tell us what it is. So while we're getting in any maybe last minute comments, I'll go ahead and share out the ones that we've gotten so far. It looks like a couple of folks have mentioned um, funding, um, whether it's funding to meet whatever criteria of that, that system might be, or whether it's funding to um, pay staff in order to be able to retain them for um, longer than just the initial period before they go on to other um, environments that can offer them higher wages. Um, and then we've had, uh, someone mentioned a system that would measure the growth of the participants. Um, and Ms. Appleberry, I'm gonna ask you, when you when you say participants, do you mean the children in your program or the the centers participating in the quality system? She also mentions um, the centers tracking the growth of the centers participating. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Um, and then um, she also mentions accommodating teachers and coaches when there's a need for additional support for diverse, diverse learners. And folks, we know in particular after the pandemic um, that there's been a, a, we've seen a lot more diversity in the needs of our children than we saw before. Um, and I think it is just, as they say, our new normal. So getting additional help for how to balance a, a wider shift um, of needs in your classroom makes complete sense. Thank you for sharing that too. You guys did a great job with these polls. I'm just gonna put, um, I'm just gonna mark the end of the poll in here, but if anything else pops up, we will have a complete record of the chat. So if you just, if anything else pops up and you wanna add, um, feel free to do so, we won't lose it. Thank you all for giving us that feedback. Um, we will ask you these questions repeatedly in, in several different formats and um, at various times, and um, your answers may stay the same and they may change over time, especially as we're able to address various elements that of feedback that we're getting from you all. So, um, you know, we, we thank you for your commitment to helping us get better and helping us meet your needs. It's not a support program if it doesn't give the support that anybody needs, right? So thank you for sharing. Okay, so as I mentioned before, we have been able to hear from folks in the fall, and I want to share with you all some of what we heard um, from those um, sessions that we are um, taking and looking at now. Um, the input from the second round is going to be included with what we've gotten in the first round, and um, we're going to 
it just expands the scope of our work. So it's, as I said, again, I cannot tell you all um, enough how important your input and your feedback is. Uh, one of the things we heard from the fall town halls is that the resource and referral sites, so I'm going to call them R&R &R sites, um, are, are useful. But sometimes they're not located in easy to access areas. Um, and that and, and a map was needed for where um, all of the resource and referral sites are because there were some closures and some new openings and people maybe weren't quite sure where their closest one was anymore. Um, and so we do have a map on the website of all of those locations. I can tell you that uh, we have uh, the one here that is open to the public as of yesterday. And then we have a, a couple of new ones that are, um, that are going to be coming soon. So we are expanding uh, the number of r, &R sites and um, trying to make sure that they are located in, in areas of the community that are easy to access and where parking is not an issue and um, where families and providers are frequently are anyway. So we, that's, that's our goal with that. Um, we've made sure that the, um, the new programs that are opening up are addressing this feedback that we've already gotten. So we're, we're putting that into place already. Um, we also heard that mobile R&Rs were missed. A lot of you remember the uh, buses that used to come into communities and offer, <clears throat> offer those R&R services um, in areas where we didn't have a permanent brick and mortar location. Um, I'm pleased to tell you that those are coming back. We heard you that you wanted them. We are bringing them back. Those uh, will be on the road soon. So again, more information to follow, but we heard you and we made it happen. So again, your feedback is so important to us. We also heard, got some great feedback on trainings actually, that, um, that the training should offer advanced topics that, um, you know, Typically, the trainings are sort of 101 introductory level, and that after you've been in the classroom for a while, you need something deeper, something richer. And so we uh, have been asked to offer advanced topics and, um, and offer more, um, more deep uh, <laughs> discussions and discovery about those various topics. And so we are working on that. Um, training should be in person. We know that this is still a mixed request. We know that some people um, are really thirsting and really um, hungry to be back in um, the physical space with people to network that they that they have really missed that. And we know that some people uh, really like the convenience of um, not having to travel and uh, not having to make the types of arrangements that are involved in being in an in-person session. So we do not have plans to, um, to have our trainings be either or. We're looking at ways that we can accommodate um, both those folks that want to be in person and those folks that enjoy it, um, that really like the, pan the change the pandemic brought to the training. The convenience of those distance learning. Um, we got some requests for specific topics such as trauma, um, teacher decision making, classroom setup, um, interacting with children, and then train the trainer opportunities were also requested. This, um, this request was very interesting um, for us where uh, providers are asking for our staff to train local child care provider staff that can be on hand to, to offer trainings locally. Um, this was really interesting. It was a, it's an innovative idea and we are really examining um, what we can do around that topic too. Again, support with engaging families is needed. Um, 
you know, we've heard from some folks it's gotten worse as a result of the pandemic um, because people got very comfortable isolating. And then we've heard from other people, it's just as bad as it always was. It didn't get any better or worse as a result of the pandemic. So um, we know that's an ongoing need. We also got requests for additional business trainings, um, frequency and variety of topic were the requests that we got there. So um, we are looking at, at that and getting some business advisors uh, to, available to make that happen. And then we heard very loud and clear that people wanted on-site TA back. Um, we really stopped that in during the pandemic and people really were asking for that to come back. Um, and so on-site technical assistance is back. I'm very thrilled to tell you that um, we have folks that are ready to begin to implement on-site TA again at um, our r, &R offices across the state. And um, I'm going to show you the way that you can begin to request on-site technical assistance. I will I will try very hard to get this link into the chat while I'm trying to drive the rest of the screens. Um, but this, this link will come out to, um, to our providers in an email at the close of this session. So uh, you'll get it shortly after this session if you don't get it now. So don't feel like you have to copy it down um, or, you, or you won't have access to it. So let's look at it. We have a smart form. It is very simple. And I'm just going to demo that for you all so that you see um, all of the steps involved in applying for an on-site technical assistance visit. I can see Ms. Cooper. Ms. Cooper, can you see that form on your screen? Can you give me a thumbs up or a nod or a shake your head no? You can see it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're the only face I can see. So um, I, I picked you out. <laughs> um, don't be don't be nervous. You look great. Okay. Um, so this is the form that link will take you to this form where it collects some who you are data so that we can make sure that we um, are accountable for all the requests that come into our office and how we are addressing them. And so um, I will just demo um, a, a, a request form here for you today so that you can see how simple it is. Um, so the name of my center is 123 Children. That's what it looks like on my license. Um, and we're asking for either the last four digits of your license number, or if you're unlicensed, your provider ID number. Um, so the last four digits of 123 Children's license are 0000. zero, zero, zero. I am located, the, the physical address, not the mailing address, the physical address for my program is 203. Mockingbird Lane, we need that physical address so that when we know how to route your request to the, to the closest person to respond to you. Um, I am located in Alligator, Mississippi. My zip code is 12345. And that is in Choctaw County in my imaginary world. Um, this contact name is going to ask for the person that needs to be the point of contact for the request. If you're filling it out, but you want um, your owner or your director or a specific teacher in your program or yourself, whoever it is that is that wants to uh, that needs to receive the follow-up from this request. That's who you enter here. 
So I, uh, I want to receive the follow up myself. So I'm going to put my name in. And then uh, we need a phone number for the person, a phone number where we can reach the contact person. Okay, and then um, an email address for um, the contact person, and that is because uh, a lot of times we will start off with sending an email confirmation after we have had the follow-up. So we'll go ahead and collect that now. And then it's gonna ask me the age group for my request. So I'm going to come, I'm going to click this and then I'm going to select, you can only select one. So um, if you need to make more than one request for your program, then you'll need to complete the form again. Okay. Because if there are multiple requests then it's harder for, we have special people that specialize in different areas. So we want to make sure that we're routing those as fast as possible. So if you need a request in more than one age group, you'll need more than one, you'll need to do this more than once, okay? So I've got a problem in my infant toddler area and I need, um, I can just write it however it pops into my mind. So I need help with um, fighting. It can be as simple as that. Um, it, it the more you can tell us about what your need is, um, the faster that we'll be able to get the tools together to get resources out to you. Um, make sure we get the right staff person. Um, but do not feel like you need to write, um, you know, a dissertation about what's going on in your classroom. Just enough to let us know um, who's the best person for us to send out. So just what the issue is, and, and we already know the age group. So that's gonna be enough for us to get out. And then um, you can request to have a copy of this sent to you if you click that. You'll just enter in the email address where you want that to go and click submit. And you'll receive this response, which is we've received your request. We're going to be reviewing it and you'll be contacted within two working days from our team. So it tells you that we got your request and the time frame for response from our team. So we're really excited to be able to bring on-site TA back to you all. And um, we're really excited with this request form because it saves you from having to call around to try to figure out which, uh, which person is the right one to be at making your request from. So we thought this would really streamline um, us getting services out to you. So right now, I just wanna ask um, if anybody can put anything in the chat about the on-site TA request piece that I just reviewed. Does anybody have any, any questions or comments about the on-site technical assistance request process? Anybody have any questions about what you can request? What, um, any information that you should or that you should be making in, in here? We have Lydia, so she can answer questions about um, the types of TA that we're prepared to send out if you've got them.
Okay, well, I'm going to assume that um, no news is, um, it means that you guys are just as excited as we are about this. Um, and that, and we hope uh, to see the request come flooding in. The site is live, it is active now. And like I said, I will be sending that out in the, um, in an email after this. Let me grab the link for that form and pop it in the chat for you really quickly. Like I said, I would just bear with me. Okay, all right, I've got that link out there for you. Um, as I said, feel free to start clicking and sending those requests over. We're really excited about this piece. A lot of our, um, a lot of the folks that we have on staff have been missing providing on-site TA. And so um, we're looking forward to being able to get back out there and um, engage directly with you all one-on-one. I think everybody's a little um, a little weary and worn down from all of our online meetings. So looking forward to a face-to-face. -face. Um, we are getting ready to wrap up. I just want to throw it back and see if Vickery, Vicky has anything that she wants to close out with or Angela or Lydia. I don't want to uh, miss giving them a chance to say anything so most of the talking in today's session. Um, this is Vicki. I'll just mention that we're continuing with in-person town hall meetings. I think what we have five more, is that right, Lauren? Um, we're, we're trying to come to different pockets of the state and visit with you in person to continue having more detailed conversations about how we can increase quality child care um, in Mississippi. So if you will, just be on the lookout for information about any in-person town halls that would be near you. Thank you. Angela, Lydia, anything before we close out? Nothing for me, Laura. Um, this is Lydia. Um, um, I think you did a great job, Laura, today. Thank you for all of the information. And please let us know if you need that TA in your classrooms or directors. You can ask for technical assistance for yourself. Thank you all for joining today. Yeah, I just want to echo that too. Um, you guys gave us some great feedback. We appreciate it. Um, we, we, I, I want to just be real clear. We're going to, we're going to ask again. We're going to repeat our questions over and over. Um, we'd rather, uh, we'd rather ask too many times than not at all. So just, just be patient with us as we continue to move forward on getting information around, um, around the quality support system. And, you know, thank you guys for joining us today. We will see you back again in July for our next session. Everybody have a great day. Thank you.